Hello Charles and welcome to this literacy video which is about exploring excellence in the way that you use sentences. And you should be watching this video if you're pretty comfortable that your sentences are accurate. So you write your sentences aren't going too long, you're using correct punctuation uh, and you want now to try and use more inventive, more sophisticated sentences to really, really push yourself through as an amazing writer. Okay? going to do this really simply, I'm not going to do it very technically and we're not really going to look at grammar too much, um, I'm just going to show you a few different ways to do that, a few different ways to make your sentences uh, more exciting. All right, we'll look at four, maybe five strategies. Okay. Right, number one, a good way to, to do really good sentences is, is to look at your openings and start with a really good word, start with your best word. Okay. This way you're trying to do something like put a striking adverb at the start of your sentence, then put a comma, then the rest of your sentence. So for example, uh, if you're doing a bit of creative writing, uh, you might use words like joyfully, reluctantly, fearfully, haltingly, eerily, eerily you know, sort of descriptive adverbs which refer to emotion or, or, or um, precisely describe the action. Because of course the function of an adverb is to describe the way something happens, is to describe a verb. You might get a, a sentence like, catastrophically, he hesitated at the very point of pulling the trigger. Okay? Um, but you can also use this in non-fiction writing, in lots of different subject areas. It's absolutely not just about English or literacy. Um, or literally in English, this is in any subject. So you might start with words like interestingly, importantly, consequently, um, significantly. Oh, I said that already? Um, no, so for example, in a piece of writing about drama, if you're doing, um, doing drama and you're up to A level or any, any sort of standard, significantly, the director chose to dress Ophelia in red for this scene, Ophelia being a character from the play Hamlet. Um, and that's a nicely phrased sentence. You'd need to go on and explain the significance, of course, but starting with an adverb is a quick and easy way to make your sentences more sophisticated and more effective. Okay, what else have we got then? Um, what else can we do? Another fairly quick and easy way is to use uh, questions to make your sentences more varied. Um, and particularly, perhaps, we'll look at asking a question and giving a short answer. So a question followed by a short sentence. Here's a piece, uh, a sentence from a piece of writing, explain what you want to do, what you want to achieve over the next 12 months. Sort of thing you might get uh, in an English lesson. Well, a, a, a part of an answer might be, what do I want to achieve this year? That's a good question. Something more varied and lively than just saying, I want to achieve this, or one thing I want to achieve is, okay? Uh, now, of course, you can keep going with questions. Uh, you can make it more interesting still. You can have, right, do, instead of that, you could have, do I have the sort of life that's full of ambition, excitement and aspiration? To be honest, no. And there you've got a longer, sen a longer question and another short sentence answer. And you've got this thing we often use in English called the rule of three, where you have one, two, three ideas uh, in a row. Ambition, excitement and aspiration in this sense. And you keep going further, you know, if you want to really vary your sentences, do I have the sort of life that's full of ambition, excitement, aspiration, a head full of dreams about becoming a world famous doctor, lawyer or politician, a burning desire to fulfil my potential to experience everything life has to give? So you've got a series of questions here, okay, making your sentence structure more varied, you could end it up, not really, if you wanted to, and there you've got a series of questions followed by a short sentence. Right, that's a really good one. Now you've got to be think about appropriacy, that would be great. In, a, in an English a piece of writing where you're aiming to entertain and to get the reader engaged. You wouldn't want to use that perhaps in a serious piece of factual um, explanation in science. Okay, um, But if you're writing a, a, a report, something exciting, thinking about your audience, that could be really good. Okay, let's crack on. What about this? A repeated ideas sentence. Now, this is a bit more complicated. Look at this one. I'll give you a model. Your job is to try and put your own content in here. That a teacher's decision was to set, excuse me, the teacher's decision to set double homework was both surprising and distressing. Surprising in that she'd never shown any interest in setting homework before, clearly this is not from Chava, and distressing in that it was the last week of term and no one wanted to do it. Right, so you've got repeated ideas. Your first bit of your sentence has the two ideas. Something was, something and something. And then the dash and explore the first one, surprising because, comma, 
and then explore the second one, distressing because, or I've used in that here. I won't repeat the ideas, let's have another look. My main suggestion for how we should spend the money is both clever and evil. Clever in that it would improve the school in many ways, evil in that it would result in one person taking overall power. And what, what, what was this? I can't remember what the student was talking about there. Um, but I think they were thinking of putting themselves in charge of the school. It was a piece of writing, if you had a hundred thousand pounds or something, how would you improve the school? Okay? Um, so, but it's the same thing. Clever and evil are your two ideas that you suggest. And then you have the dash, you explore the first idea, you have your comma, and you explore the second idea. It's a really good one to just learn that sentence structure and use it in your work. Okay. Let's go for this one. This is a rule of three sentence again, this time with a summative modifier, which sounds posh, but it's not that hard. The teachers could be, to could be told this is the same thing. It's how do we improve our school? I remember it now. The teachers could be told to tell good jokes, give students cake, and not talk so much. There's your rule of three. Three things. Dash. Three strategies that would improve the lives of students a great deal. Sounds fair to me. Um, okay, but you, do you see how it works? Three, it's similar to the previous, the repeated ideas one, but this one it's three ideas, a dash, and this summative modifier, something which sums up the effect of those three things. Okay, so we've got good jokes, cake, not talk so much, dash, three strategies that would improve the students. Like the three strategies sums up the, uh, the, the previous bit of the sentence. What about this example, example of the same thing? In my life I want to be honest, kind and compassionate, dash. Three qualities that would make sure I have a positive impact on those around me. So there we are. There's four types of sentences that will help you, if you learn to use them, and you learn to use them accurately, to show that you can construct sentences in a more sophisticated, um, more effective way. That you can keep your reader interested, that you can write um, and show complexity uh, in your writing. Okay, word of warning. You won't necessarily be able to do them straight away. You're going to have to practice. You have to get it wrong a couple of times. Um, but it's a really key area where we know if you can, can explore excellence in this, um, it will make you into much better writers uh, and you'll communicate in a much more powerful way. And that, remember, is the point of learning to be a better writer so you can communicate powerfully and make a really, really positive contribution in the world. Off you go.